All right. Um, first of all, let me thank the organizers for inviting me here. Um, I'll tell you our uh, the work we have been doing with uh, these two gentlemen. Uh, one of them is in the audience, uh, which probably do not need much of the introduction here. Uh, and it's related to quantum criticality in, in topological uh, insulators uh, with disorder. So I thought it is appropriate for this occasion to, to start with this. So uh, what we have been told back then is that to think about localization transition, we, we need one par uh, single parameter, which is a conductance. Uh, longitudinal conductance, and then everything is given by, 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 by that. And according to this famous picture, uh, there is a localization transition in dimensionality larger than 2. We can do something with that uh, analytically in 2 plus epsilon dimension. That's this uh, critical point in 2 plus epsilon dimension. Not much can be done in 3 dimension. Uh, there are marvelous exact results for 1 dimension. Uh, starting from Ifyatov and Larkin and then uh, many others, but there is no transition in one dimension. So uh, we do have uh, exact <coughs> theory, but, but there is no much of interesting things to, to look at. Now, of course, the, the situation very quickly changed after that due to advent of a quantum Hall effect uh, where uh, Today, we understand that it's because there is a different symmetry in the system. It's a uh, class A uh, Hamiltonian. And what it has, it has a Landau levels. And in clean system, there is a marvelous picture of Landau quantization. And according to that, uh, sigma xy should be quantized and sigma xx should be zero unless uh, Fermi energy is, is right at, at, at the Landau level. Now, of course, disorder changes these things quite a bit, and Landau levels uh, become broadened, uh, the uh, density of states is, uh, is smeared. It's uh, still oscillatory, probably, but uh, very weakly. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the quantum hole, of course, survives. And uh, the reason for its survival, as, as, as was understood again uh, soon after, is, uh, is the fact that disorder actually stabilizes uh, as we would say today, uh, topological index. And here the topological index is nothing else but uh, quantized sigma xy. So the way it was internalized uh, in, in early eight or mid-80s, uh, first by Khmelnytsky and then uh, substantialized a little bit by Pruiskin, is that we actually have to think about two parameters, not one parameter. One of them is, is our old friend longitudinal conductance, but, but there is the second one, uh, sigma xy, which in today's language we understand it as an average topological index. Now, uh, sample specifically, it is it is still quantized, but uh, once we, we we take some ensemble average uh, of, of different disorder realization, uh, we lose this quantization, and uh, it may be a anything. But uh, once we take go to larger and larger system sizes, or equivalently smaller and smaller temperature, uh, the topological index, uh, the, the integerness of the topological index restores itself, so it returns to self-averaging situation. And the way to understand it is to uh, follow this flow diagram, which is a flow with increasing of a system size, uh, according to which, uh, sigma xx goes down, and that's localization, and simultaneously sigma xy approaches the integer values of uh, 2, 1, 2, and so on and so forth, which is nothing else but, um, but feeling factor. Uh, unless, unless you happen to be right in the middle uh, with, with a half integer feeling factor, when the system is frustrated, uh, it, it Fermi energy happens to be right at the middle of the Landau level, and uh, there is a delocalized state conjectured there. So conductance supposedly flow to, uh, to longitudinal conductance supposedly flow to a finite value. Um, now, not much have been done with that si since this groundbreaking works. Uh, the only thing probably which happened is that from now on, people r decided to rotate this phase diagram by 90 degrees. And 
ever since it, it, after Khmelnytsky, it was plotted 90 degree rotated. So I will show quite a few diagrams like this, uh, but they all will be all 90 degree rotated. So don't, don't be confused. All right. So um, meanwhile, uh, what, what was understood that there are many more uh, symmetry classes, actually there are 10 of them, and uh, s depending on dimensionality and which is this uh, horizontal line count dimensionalities, um, the vertical line uh, labels symmetry classes, and what is stays in this periodic uh, table is a homotopy uh, uh, group, which may be either Z or Z2 uh, in, in some of the symmetry classes, again, depending on dimensionality. And you see it's arranged in this beautiful periodic table. Uh, so few famous examples is uh, in integer quantum Hall effect in uh, D equal 2, uh, spin quantum Hall effect in, in D equal 2, and then three-dimensional topological insulator uh, uh, in D equal 3. Now, the, the, the topic of my talk today is, is actually one dimension, or rather quasi-one dimension. All what I will be talking about is quasi-one dimensional, not strictly one dimensional. And actually, number of channels will go to infinity. And according to this periodic uh, table, there are five symmetry classes in one dimension uh, which may have non-trivial topology. And three of these classes has a topological index which belong to Z, uh, group pretty much like integer quantum Hall effect, and two of them has Z2 uh, topological index. Uh, most famous of them is Kitaev chain, uh, actually either that or that, depending on details. Um, all right, uh, so I, I, what, what I will be talking about is, is this quasi-one-dimensional uh, situation with this symmetries appropriate to non-trivial topologies. Okay. Now, um, we are definitely not the first one who, who tackled this, this question. Uh, people started to realize that something funny happens in, in, in these symmetry classes um, uh, back in actually late 90s. So that was a bunch of works uh, mostly with uh, DMPK technology uh, done by uh, Brower and Mudre and uh, Eitland and Furusaki and many others. Uh, Reed, uh, Grusberg and uh, Smita should be commented uh, by, by doing very insightful work there. Uh, also in two dimension, in addition to integer quantum Hall effect, people realized uh, that uh, uh, class C can be solved exactly and then there's some work in class D. Uh, so what, what was common to all this work is that people stumbled upon the fact that in this low dimensional system one may have delocalization. For two dimension it was sort of after quantum Hall effect not that surprising. Uh, for one dimension de delocalized situation for disordered one dimensional system the delocalized situation was kind of odd. Uh, now what we understand today and what will be sort of a uh, unified um, uh, melody of my talk is that we understand today that uh, what happened here is that they accidentally happened to be in a quantum critical point of uh, topological uh, quantum phase transition. Uh, so all these uh, examples, they have uh, quantum, <coughs> quantum phase transition between different topological classes. And if you happen to be by, by accident right at this critical point, you see delocalization. Pretty much like in uh, integer quantum Hall effect, if you happen to be at exactly half integer filling, you see the de delocalized uh, situation. There is a delocalized state. Oh, all right. Now, um, so how one goes about it? Uh, so we, we, we're dealing with a uh, topological insulator. Um, so first of, first of all, we were told that um, it is characterized by, in quasi one dimension by presence of H states. It may be 0, 1 if it's Z2 class, or it may be 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 uh, if it's uh, Z topological class. And we were told that because of topological definition of this uh, H states, they should supposed to be uh, robust to, to small perturbation. So if we add small perturbation, they are protected. Now, protected by what? 
protected by the presence of the gap. We are talking, after all, about insulators. It has gap, and this gap protects uh, the, the, the age states. Uh, so if you add the small disorder, sort of the, the natural tendency is to say that nothing happens. You, you, you can't uh, violate uh, topological protection. Now, if you think a little bit, look a little bit closer on that, that's not that simple. Because even the small amount of disorder immediately destroys the gap. First, it does it because of the Lifshitz tails. Uh, but if you in increase uh, a little bit disorder, then already in kind of mean field uh, naive level, gaps are closed. And uh, you have a nominal metal. So since gaps closed, there is nobody actually to, to protect the, the, the holiness of topological index. So uh, one should to, to, to sort of discuss what, what, what happens with the age states in the presence of many other states be, which live in a gap due to disorder. Okay, so now age states by no means are not the only one who, who lives, uh, whose energy is in, inside the gap. Now another sort of difficulty or uh, unusualness uh, is that uh, 99% of the texts uh, will explain topological index in a case space. You're supposed to look in a brilliant zone. You, you, you calculate certain uh, topological uh, invariant, like berry phase or chern number. You integrate over the brilliant zone, and, and here you go. It's either integer or, or, or zero or, or non-zero integer. Now, what do you do about it with, with, with disorder? With disorder, you immediately lose your k space. k is not a good quantum number. So even the definition of a topological versus non-topological is supposed to be uh, somehow uh, re uh, re referred. So if you make a small uh, uh, table uh, and compare clean and disordered situations, so in clean you have a k space, in disordered you don't. In clean you, you may be lucky and have band gap which protects you. In disorder you immediately lose it. Nevertheless, uh, the topological index can be defined even in disordered situation, but, but, but with some care. Now the picture which emerges out of this, uh, let me uh, jump straight to, to, to the answer, so to say, is the following. So suppose you have a certain, uh, in a clean system, suppose you have a certain control parameter in, let's say, in Kitaev chain, uh, it's uh, typically assumed to be a chemical potential, or in experiment, it's usually a magnetic field which drives you between uh, topological and non-topological phases. So you have a certain control parameter which will switch you between n equals zero, topologically trivial, and then n equal one, maybe n equal two if it's Z symmetry class, and so on and so forth. So now in, uh, the transitions between this, uh, these points, uh, b between different topological classes, happens when the gap, the, the band gap, the clean, clean band gap, closes. The only way to go from uh, one topological class to another is by closing bulk gap. So in these uh, points of the transition, where, where in clean system, uh, the system goes to from one topological state to another, the band gap closes. Now, if you add uh, the disorder as an additional direction in my phase diagram, so you would think that these points should be not an isolated points, but as basically termination lines termination points of a certain lines in this phase diagram. So, so the picture which emerges out of, out of this is that in a phase plane of disorder versus some control parameter, uh, there are lines uh, which distinguish between uh, topological situations. Right? Again, in a clean case, that's the, lines, the, that's the points where the gap closes. In a disorder case, there is no, strictly speaking, gap anywhere. But nevertheless, there is a line which distinguishes between different topological classes. So what happens when you, when you cross this line? Uh, that's a genuine phase transition. Uh, it's characterized by divergent correlation length, and in this case, it's localization length. So any time you, you cross one of those lines, uh, localization length diverges, and there is a 
delocalized state at, at zero energy. So in, I, I didn't mention it, but in all the symmetry classes, zero energy plays a special role. There is a symmetry of a spectrum with respect to up and uh, positive and negative energy. So the delocalization I'm talking about happens always strictly at, at, at zero energy. Uh, and it happens at one point in a phase diagram, you have to tune disorder and the con your control parameter to, 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 a certain, uh, to a certain special point. Uh, there, uh, there is a delocalized state at zero energy. So once you have this diagram, the, the natural question is what's, what's the critical theory which, which describe it and whether one can make it more uh, quantitative uh, and not just a uh, fairy tale like that. And here the, uh, the uh, miracle of quasi one dimensional system helps. We can solve things exactly in, in, in one dimension. So the way to solve it exactly is, uh, is, is to use uh, the uh, Sigma model machinery. I'll jump to this in a moment. But, but first, let me just tell you what, what is it all about. So we'll, we'll, we'll be driving to universal theory describing this quantum criticality, it will be described in terms of two parameters, pretty much like uh, uh, integer quantum Hall effect. One is longitudinal conductance, as, as always. The second one is, is a configuration disorder average of topological index, which again, initially maybe not uh, necessarily integer because of uh, configuration averaging, but then it will flow to an integer. So there is these two parameters, which, which are functions of all microscopic uh, control parameters of my theory, the chemical potential, magnetic field, strength of disorder, uh, all that. Uh, so the, that they all define these two parameters. And then uh, these two parameters play the role of effective charges in my uh, sigma model, in my uh, uh, field theory, and I can look how these two parameters, how these two observables flow as a function of the system size. So as a function of the system size, they will flow to, uh, to one of the fixed points, and these fixed points are characterized by um, vanishing longitudinal conductivity, because it's, it's localization after all, and integer value of a topological index. So we will find uh, this Pruiskin-like, uh, Khmelnytsky Pruiskin-like phase diagram, but we'll, we'll be able to do it sort of exactly because now it, it's not in two dimension, but in quasi one dimension. Okay? So that's pretty much what I'm uh, driving at. Now, um, uh, the simplest model uh, to consider is in, in Z classes. I'll uh, talk few a little bit more about the two classes, is so-called schrieffer higer model, which is kind of a polyacetylen dimerized situation. You have two sublattices A and B, and you have two different hoppings. Uh, you can generalize it immediately to quasi one dimension. You still have two, two subspaces. So um, the symmetry which protects your topology is this sublattice symmetry. Hamiltonian is supposed to have only uh, entries which goes from sublattice A to sublattice B, but not zeros on the diagonals. Uh, then in clean system, the topological index is defined as uh, whether this thing is a function of a uh, momentum. You go around the brilliant zone, uh, it goes a, uh, uh, around closed loop, and this closed loop may uh, encompass or not encompass the, the, the origin in a complex Q space. Um, now, um, so that's, you know, scientific way of, of writing it, integral over the brilliant zone of, of, uh, uh, of a phase, essentially. And if, if this phase uh, goes around the origin, that's, that's an integer. If not, that, that's zero. Now, uh, in disordered case, uh, you still can define it. You, uh, the, the trick to do is to, to put your disordered system in a very big loop uh, of size capital L um, and subject it to a fictitious gauge flux. This gauge flux uh, da, uh, acts in a different ways in sublattices A and sublattices B. So once you do that, you essentially um, uh, take 
take a unit cell of your system to be the entire system of a si uh, size L. And the fact that it is in, in, in a, uh, on a ring kind of uh, uh, give you momentum space, but with very, very tiny uh, brilliant zone. It's now size of 1 over 8. But to define topology, that, that's OK. You, you, you can have as, as small brilliant zone as you wish, and, and, and then uh, calculate your topological index. So the way it's uh, done formally, it, uh, it's, uh, you don't need to go into this detail, but the thing is that uh, the formalism actually lends itself very, very nicely into the supersymmetric um, uh, kind of um, type of thinking. You need to, to calculate ratio of the determinants of the two green functions uh, with, with different gauge fluxes. Um, um, fictitious gauge fluxes in, in, inserted. Uh, and then your topological index and your longitudinal conductance may be easily calculated once you know uh, this ratio of the two uh, determinants. Uh, so the, the trick is actually 20 years old. So uh, it was very well exploited in this community. I probably don't have to go deeper into it. Uh, the nice thing about it that since we have a ratio of the two determinants, we can encode one of them uh, through the bosonic degrees of freedom, another through the fermionic degrees of freedom, and altogether it uh, may be represented as a certain supersymmetric um, field theory. Uh, now you go ahead, you, you, you crank the, uh, uh, the machinery, you end up with a, with a sigma model, which has, the, uh, as, as was uh, promised, two parameters. One, so one term is a, is a gradient term, uh, quite uh, familiar. So the coefficient in front of it is a longitudinal conductance, which is the same as bare localization length in, in quasi one dimension. That's, that's the same thing. In addition, you may have a topological term. The symmetries of, uh, of these models allow to have non-trivial term like this. And the coefficient in front of this term uh, is going to be our uh, topological parameter. And then uh, uh, you, you parameterize somehow this supersymmetric manifold. Uh, it has non-compact and compact uh, coordinates. Uh, and your fictitious flux enters uh, as a gauge field. So you, you, uh, which you can gauge out to have a twisted boundary condition. So you, you consider this supersymmetric field theory with twisted boundary condition, and the boundary twist is, 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 is um, your fictitious flux. Then you take derivative with respect to these fluxes, and, and you have your observables. Um, now, that can be uh, understood as, uh, let me see how much time I have. Um, Yep, I probably sh should uh, should uh, accelerate. So since it's a quasi-one-dimensional uh, field theory, it can be solved by through a transfer matrix technique by mapping on a certain quantum mechanics. And this quantum mechanics live in this, uh, on this uh, supersymmetric manifold parameterized again by, by certain coordinates. So uh, this, this quantum mecha mechanics actually qu is quite similar to, to, to the usual uh, Aronov-Bohm type quantum mechanics where topological index plays the role of the uh, um, uh, vector potential. So as a function of a topological index, the spectrum of my transfer matrix uh, changes and there is a special points at half integer value of the topological index uh, where there are degeneracy in the spectrum. So essentially, you, you, what we have is slightly more complicated version of, of the same story. It's, uh, uh, it has few, co few coordinates uh, as opposed to just one, but, but by and large, it's, it's this story. So you end up with, uh, with a certain Schrodinger equation in a curved space. There are Jacobians and, and, and whatnot. Uh, not, luckily, to us, in all symmetry classes, this quantum mechanics can be solved exactly in terms of uh, certain, uh, uh, sometimes simple function, and sometimes in terms of hypergeometric functions. But it it, it can be solved uh, uh, in all symmetry classes, and as a result, we we, we have an uh, exact solutions for uh, conductance and topological index, 
as function of, of the system size. So here is a uh, sort of Pruiskin phase diagram. Uh, points are for different system sizes. This is L equal xi, 2 xi, 4 xi, 8 xi, and so on and so forth. And you see that uh, depending where you start, um, you go either to integer topological index or zero topological index, or you may go to next integer. Uh, it's out of the screen. Uh, unless you happen to, to, to be at a quantum critical point, and then your system keep going uh, along the critical line, and topological index remains half integer, no matter how, how big is the system size. Moreover, uh, for all those situations, longitudinal conductance become uh, exponentially small. Here it's, it, it goes to zero, but, but very, very slowly in a power law way. So there is no localization along the quantum critical line. Okay. Uh, so that uh, essentially what, what, what I'm trying to say is that there, there is this phase diagram in a uh, space of bare parameters. You can be either in, in one of the uh, phases, topological Anderson insulator or trivial Anderson insulator. You may also be in a uh, transition line. And then depending where you start, you, you flow to, to, to one of those points. Um, so I'll skip numerical uh, calculations. But, uh, we can do it. Um, now let me say a few words about Z2 classes. Yes, OK. Um, so in Z2 classes, the story is quite a bit different uh, in the sense that you cannot introduce topological index. Uh, you, uh, uh, the, you cannot, I'm so, I take it back, you cannot, there is no topological term in your field theory. Instead, the uh, group manifold uh, is doubly connected. There are two parts of the group manifold, one with determinant plus one, another with determinant minus one. And uh, what your field theory does, it, it discontinuously jumps between the two, the two group manifolds. Okay. You still can uh, run this transfer matrix um, uh, calculations. Uh, the, the funny thing about it, that is your uh, quant effective quantum mechanics is now spinner quantum mechanics because you have an amplitude to be in one part of the manifold and there is an amplitude to be in another part of the manifold. And this spinner quantum mechanics happens to be, by the reasons which we do not understand, uh, nicely, genuinely supersymmetric. Not in a sense of effect of supersymmetry, but it's a just textbook uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Uh, and uh, because of that, again, you can solve it exactly with, with, with all the details. And um, again, I'll, I'll skip um, technicalities. Uh, but but uh, so the, this phase diagram, topo longitudinal conductance versus topological index, that's now not an artistic view. This is an exact result as function of a system size. You flow either to trivial phase or to a topological phase, and, and you know really exactly how, how the system does it. Uh, now, in the remaining three minutes, I want to, uh, to, to, to say something else. So imagine you're sitting in this uh, uh, quantum critical point where the system is nominally delocalized. And you may ask now dynamical questions. So OK, it is delocalized, but how the propagation in this delocalized phase look like? And let me give you the answer. The answer is uh, that uh, what happens is a Sinai diffusion. And the Sinai diffusion is an observation which was made quite a uh, long time ago that uh, whatever is associated with Sinai diffuses painfully slowly. Uh, so uh, displacement scales not like square root of time as the uh, a custom in a normal diffusion, but it, it scales like logarithm square of time. Now, the, the specific model for that is, is known again for a long time due to, uh, to uh, Yakov Sinai. Sinai um, and it's a classical model where uh, you have a Langevin process and the force is random. Not the potential is, is random, but, but the force is random. Okay? Uh, so if force is random, then potential is an in, being an integral over force over n plus minus whatever random uh, process. So potential exhibits a random walk. And that means that if you want to move distance x, you typically encounter a barrier which is square root of x. 
And that means that typical expectation time to, to, to move distance x scales like e to the square root of x, the height of the barrier, divided by the temperature. And that immediately brings you back to this formula, and the coefficient in front of this logarithm square is nothing else but temperature square normalized by the amplitude of these uh, fluctuations. So in classical physics, it's, it's a very well-known process. And, and uh, it, mathematicians proved that that's indeed the, the, the correct asymptotics for, for this process. Now, the funny thing which we found is that uh, at the quantum critical point, the same exact thing happens in a quantum system. We don't have a good interpretation for that. We don't have a hand-waving model like, uh, like the classical one, which I just showed you. But, but that's an unmistakable fact. Once you, um, once you do this machinery, um, you, you immediately find that the nature of the diffusion uh, is, is a sine diffusion. Um, so that's supposed to, to, um, to explain it in a little uh, more technical details, but probably I'm running out of time, so I'll skip uh, technicalities, I'll skip um, uh, mod Berezinsky physics, uh, and I go to my, to my summary. So what I try to, to tell you is that there is a real space uh, approach to uh, uh, non-translationally invariant disordered topological insulators. Uh, it exhibits quantum criticalities in, at the topological phase transitions. It may be described by two-parameter field theory, um, which exhibit universal scaling, and the topological index is stabilized uh, by localization, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's the localization, pretty much like in quantum Hall effect, it is localization, which make topology stable. And uh, the second part, which I didn't have much time to, to discuss, is that the uh, dynamical rules which uh, govern propagation at the quantum criticality is, is Sinai diffusion, and there is a generalized Mott's law, which I uh, didn't have time to discuss, but maybe for private discussions. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much.